before we start, I recommend you watch the first video on air gunnery as we expand on those concepts in this video. Revy is short for Reflex Visio, and they are the reflector sights which you find in the German airplanes. There are different versions of the Revy, but this video is going to cover how to use the Revy C12-D. Just like the Mark II sight, we can estimate range of a fighter very easily. If it fills the ring, it's going to be 100 meters away. If it fills half the diameter, it's going to be 200 meters. And if it fills up one third of the diameter, it's going to be 300 meters away. Since the Revy is not adjustable, you should know how to estimate range for the airplanes larger than a fighter to know when to fire. The range equals the wingspan times the number of times it fills the ring times 10. Looking at this example, we have an IL-2 which can fit twice into the gun side in this picture. So with a 15 meter wingspan times 2 times 10, it tells us it's 300 meters away. Pause the video here to practice the range exercise. Looking at the Revy in more detail, the ring is 100 mils in diameter and each tick mark along the vertical and horizontal lines is 18 mils. A mil represents 1 meter of length, width or height of an object that is 1000 meters away from you. This can also equal feet in imperial units. There is a mathematical method to calculate precisely using mils, but to make it easier, I've done the math to create visual representations using angle off in two main scenarios. Earlier, we learned estimation of lead using angle off primarily for simplicity. Now we'll throw target airspeed into the mix as well. For these angle off values, we're assuming the target's flying about 300 miles per hour. So if we were to change the target airspeed, our lead will change as well. In fact, the required amount of lead will change proportionally with airspeed. So if you were to halve the target speed, you're going to require half the amount of lead for the same angle off. So by understanding how lead changes with the target's airspeed, we can now estimate lead more accurately with angle off in two simple scenarios. The first is the high airspeed scenario. These are the angle off values you'll use when you're assuming that the target is flying faster than 400 km per hour. These could be targets that are lightly maneuvering, unaware of your presence, or they're diving away. The second scenario is about low airspeed, and this uses angle off values assuming the best turn rate for fighters is around 270 to 300 km per hour. So you want to visualize these values against a target that is aggressively maneuvering or you detect is flying slow. Now in this, our target is going to be diving on his own target, so he's going to be in a high speed scenario. And we look here, he seems to be around 30 degrees angle off, so we're going to have to put him beyond the ring. Looking at things in slower time, we visualize the 30 degree ring, we place him onto it, and then we fire. Now he's put himself in a spin, which gives him zero forward velocity, so we can put him in the gun side and fire. Again, slowing down time. Without any forward velocity, there's no lead required, so you only need to put the crosshairs on the target to hit. One thing you'll notice in this clip is the lack of lead given by other airplanes shooting at this target. As we continue in our turn with him, he's around 20 degrees angle off and descending, so we put him at the top of the ring and we fire. Then we visualize our rings and we isolate it to 20 degrees. We want to push forward to keep him there as we fire since we're below him. You can see we scored multiple hits. This scenario is going to be a low speed shot at 45 degrees angle off. Looking at it again, we have our rings for our slow speed scenario. And since he's 45 degrees angle off, it's going to be outside the ring when we want to start firing. 
Now in order to make this somewhat of a tracking shot, we need to roll to get ourselves in plane with the target, and then we start applying back pressure to keep him in place at that 45 degree position. In this, both the target and I are climbing uphill, so it's going to be a lower speed scenario. And as we fire, the angle off is going to change, so we need to adjust our shot. As we have the rings, we're starting out with about 10 degrees angle off when we fire. But while we're firing, the angle off increases to up to 30 degrees, so you need to adjust the placement of the target in your sight as you're shooting. This is a high speed scenario following an evasive bandit, and a shot is taken at around 10 degrees angle off. Here we're lining up where he's going to be, because we know he's going to come back to the right, so as we fire at the 10 degrees, we score the hit. Here we're diving on an I-16, so it'll be a slow speed scenario, and angle off will be 45 degrees. So we have our low speed rings, we're going to visualise the 45 degrees, as he comes around we just start firing, as he passes through we score the hits. Here we're diving on a target with a high airspeed, and we'll take the shot at about 10 to 20 degrees angle off. Here's our rings again, isolate the 10 to 20 degree ring, and we start firing. Here we're diving on a high speed target, and we're going to shoot around 10 degrees angle off. So again, visualising our rings, isolating 10 degrees. As he comes up to that portion of the ring, we start firing, and we take him out. Here we're chasing someone in a high speed scenario, and we're going to fire about 10 degrees angle off and hold him. So here's our rings, we isolate the 10 degree ring, get in range, place them on the ring, and we start firing. Now the good thing here is we have a slow enough closure that allows us to have a long firing window against this target. Here we're chasing someone, it's another high speed scenario, but we'll shoot between 20 to 30 degrees angle off. Now what you notice here is we isolate the 20 to 30 degree rings, I start firing too early, and we see the bullets falling behind the bandit. But as we make the adjustment to between 20 and 30 degrees angle off, we can see the bullets striking home. Here we're diving on our target, and it has a high airspeed, and we're going to shoot about 10 degrees angle off. So you can see as we come here, we isolate the 10 degree ring, gets in that approximate position and we start firing, we can keep him there until he goes down. Here we're coming after an I-16, so this is going to be a slow speed scenario, and he's at 90 degrees angle off. And so watching here we have our low speed rings, as always, we're lining up his projected flight path and we start firing just before he breaches the 90 degree ring, we score the hits. Here we're following a target at high speed, we're going to allow it to drift through our gun sight at 10 degrees angle off and fire. So here's our high speed rings, we're going to isolate 10 degrees. As he drifts back through, we start firing and we score the hit. Now we'll check out a few high aspect scenarios. Because this is high aspect, we're assuming high speed. It's going to be between 30 to 45 degrees angle off in the fire. So watching as he comes close, we have our 30 degree ring. We want to fire before he reaches it, and we score a hit as he passes through. And this is going to be between 10 to 20 degrees angle off in the fire. Because of how we're flying to each other, we have a relatively long firing window. So as we place him between 10 and 20 degrees, 
you can score the hits as he flies past. And the last one we'll look at as he goes left to right, it's going to be around 45 to 30 degrees angle off. So we can see here, we're going to line him up with his flight path through the center of the site. Start firing nice and early. Get our hit and cease firing. That completes the tutorial on how to use the Revy site. If you liked it, let me know by using the like button or leave a comment. And don't forget to be a subscriber to see more videos.